information because she's been around them for a while. Okay. Mm-hmm. And she lives in Philly now, but she was just telling Adia and Malik about like different marriages and stuff like that. I was like, I'm not really surprised, but. So what she was saying was that in recent years, like in the last year or so? Um, so I, the couple that she mentioned, I know they were married before I left, I think. So I don't know exactly when it happened. I just know um, that it did happen. And what, and you, well, you're not sure it happened, but basically. Yeah, I'm not sure. What, what happened was what? Like the men were cheating on their wives with, with who? With another man. That's all I know. And the other man. Um, and that also happened with one of the girls who used to live in South Carolina. I follow her on one of the social medias, but she was married and she found out her man was cheating with a man. She went through his email. And the crazy part was, I think the whole, the Muslims were trying to force her to stay married to him. So now she moves to Canada. She doesn't even practice like that anymore. But what what happened is that uh, the male themselves are getting together now, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And yeah. because of the fact that the female is in so much authority and has all these meetings and has to travel and is more into mm-hmm. picking up the TMOA banner with the sheikha, the back up the sheikha, they're actually neglecting the man. And it's really important that, you know, people understand that it's bad enough that the true lovely brotherhood is no, not really taught today. Somebody's going to say, wait a minute, I love my Muslim brother. Have you... Have you traveled and worked? Do you actually work with your Muslim brother on a day-to-day basis? Because that's really the responsibility of every Muslim to work with other Muslims, to grow with other Muslims. That's why we are one. Um, But it's already bad enough. But now you take a woman and you put her in charge of of a bunch of grown men who already have been, you know, uh, wrong done. Uh, belittled by the fact that you're in charge, number one. That's the first slap in the face. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, but, you know, I don't care what Sufi order you think does that. I understand you think that this particular branch of Qadri does it, but he didn't even have, he never presented a teacher, a sheikh that taught him Sufia. He claimed that Imam Ali taught him that. Imam Ali, nobody's able to go to Imam Ali right now and say, did you teach this man Sufi Qadri? And besides, if you really did learn with Imam Ali, you know, the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, his, his, his cousin, why would you need something from Abdul Qadir Jilani? Does that make sense to you? Like, Abdul Qadir Jilani came after Prophet. I mean, as a matter of fact, Qadiriya was not even named until after his death. Qadiriya was not even named until after his death. You think Abdul Qadir Jilani really would call people to himself? Does that make sense to you? No. So why would you take the responsibility of doing it for him? Because you want to benefit yourself and your family on, on this duration in earth. But that's not why Allah Ta'ala told us to worship him. Not to get make our lives comfortable on this earth. That's where the ta'ud comes into play. You know? But yeah. the bottom line is that he never had the authority to quote Quran, abstracts, explanation, tafsir, hadith, the same thing. And the Sufi Qadriya order, he did not have that either since he never did have a physical sheikh that gave him the authority to do that. Oh, wow. And again, on top of all of that, and they have not, not a single TMOA member or Talib, anybody from Mubarak Jilani's camp, been able to refute any of those in any way, shape, or form. They never met his sheikh. Most of them never even got to meet him. They don't even know him, most of them, in your age bracket, don't even know him. And that's who most of them are today. The youth, most of them, because the elders are passing away. A lot of them are gone, and they died in that that darkness. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not really surprised. Honestly, since I moved away, um, I've been telling people, honestly, the Muslim community down there kind of was like a cult, in my opinion. Oh, you you uh, you don't watch enough R2F. R2F, I mean, if you follow that, uh, that, uh, that channel, I mean, they joke around a lot, you know, I have to say that, but at, at the end of the day, you know, most of what they're saying 
you know, and they mentioned that particularly it was a cult. It is a cult. I mean, I would have to agree with 100%. And other people, yeah. even if you listen to the interview uh, the other day, that's what, I mean, he says that's still his Jamaat. He loves them and everything, but it's a cult. You know, they, they apparently kicked us out of the Jamaat because we went to public school for a long time. Yes, yeah. I did. Yes. Yeah, I did hear about that, you know. Yeah, he but, wasn't even putting us in, in public school so he had no choice, basically because uh, diapers came and stuff. So before then, a lot of people were, we were homeschooled by this Umubarak, actually, and we never were able to go out into real life. Uh, and they called it mingling and stuff, but that's real life. In real life, you have to mingle. In real life, you have to, uh, you're not gonna do business with only women. So it was like, they always, have rules and regulations about but and, and that but that's what a cult is as we've already established that but what i'm trying to explain to you, as far as the men as far as the men are concerned particularly those who you know know the truth and refuse to accept it they eventually are going to fall like you said in love with themselves you know that, i mean they don't have anything else i mean you didn't give them their role as males they're going to take you know your 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 back seat as a female that's, I mean, what do you expect? I mean, that's, this is the first I'm hearing about it, but what I'm saying is that I'm not shocked by that, yeah. you know, that, 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 you know, so, but that's very interesting. And I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised and very disappointed to hear that, you know, your male now are becoming homosexuals. Yeah. Astaghfirullah, you know, that's, that's why, you know, it's not just a homosexual act that everybody should be focused on. It's really about all the acts that lead to it and beyond it. That's what people should be focusing on because it, it's not just in the Quran saying, you know, do not take on, you know, same, same partners, but it's saying that along with fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not reject Allah. Why? Because when they did that, that's when they started committing all sorts of atrocities already. You know, they were uh, uh, highway bandits. You know, they were cheating people in the marketplace. You know, they were very, very, very aggressive. And imagine all these qualities that you, you know, you don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here you are now lying about, you know, who you're supposed to mate with. You know, and um, the sad reality is that they know and everybody knows now. You know, that this man had no authority for any of these things that he claimed. And it's a very tough p pill to swallow. You know, yeah, Abu's been in it, I don't know, 25 years or so, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, there have been people who've been there with him at least 40-something years. I don't think anybody's been there with him over 50 years. But for sure, the point of the matter is now he's demised, Allah seized him, and they have nothing to really show 